Hello and welcome. This is one of three videos in a collection of tutorials to talk about how you could use uh, DDWRT and um, achieve certain functions. I've noticed on the internet there's a lot of questions on how you can use uh, VPN clients and um, how to um, connect two routers to create one network, how to bypass the VPN connected to a router on certain machines and how to uh, bypass uh, the VPN on certain websites. So this, these videos, tutorials are for a lay person and hopefully answer some of those questions because there seems to be a lot of questions and very few answers. This is video one of three. All three videos can be watched independently but this is to, talking about how you connect two routers, one of them running DDWRT and a VP, open VPN and I'm assuming for this tutorial that you have successfully installed DDWRT and your VPN client is working working successfully. The, the contents of this video, we're going to talk about the setup of the system, we're going to talk about how we join the two routers to create one network, and we'll talk about how we transfer data between machines, uh, we'll talk about uh, some troubleshooting and where you can find some additional information. Physically, uh, the, the main connections are the computers of router 2 and the set and the smart TV of router 2 are plugged into the Ethernet connection. Uh, the internet connection of router 2 is plugged into the Ether connection, Ethernet connection of router 1 and the internet connection of router 1 is connected into the modem in order to access the internet. In my system, uh, router 1 is called 192.168.1.1 and router 2 running DDWRT and, and the open VPN is running 192.168.2.1 and the reason why these two routers can't talk to each other is because basically by connecting the routers in that method, the only method I have found in order to be able to use a open VPN connection on router 2 is basically results in a separate network, network 1 being attached to router 1 and network 2 being attached to router 2. So if you're not sure about what your router names are, one of the convenient ways to do that is, especially in Windows 7, is go to the control panel, look for network and sharing center, and then if you click on see full map, you'll, you'll get a, uh, a, a layout system of your, um, your network. Uh, in this case, um, if you then put your mouse above different objects, it will actually tell you the, the IP addresses of those objects. So in this case, I've placed the mouse directly above the gateway, and therefore it's told me the gateway address is 192.168.2.1, which is the name of the router. So the gateway icon in this case is the router 2. Then if we type that number in, 192.168.2.1, into a internet browser, was attached to a, on a computer attached to router 2 you'll get the web interface for router 2 you'll have to put in your username and password username is generally admin and your password is whatever you chose first thing up we should always back up the router settings in case something goes wrong and therefore you can always go back to it so you go to the administrations tab click on backup and then at the bottom and in the middle of the screen you click on the back button and remember to save the file somewhere and give it a name that you remember in case you need to restore it. Same deal if you have to restore a file go to the administration tab click on backup browse for the file on your computer and then click restore. <coughs> so what we need now is the WAN IP address of router 2 as provided by router 1 Whilst your VPN is running, it will only show you the name of the uh, one, the one IP as provided by your VPN client. What we need is the one IP without the, the VPN running. So the easiest way to do that is to um, to switch the power off to router two by unplugging it and then plugging it back in. It'll take a couple of minutes before your VPN client to start running again. In those few minutes, you need to be able to log back into the internet browser and onto the web interface for router 2. Then you'll see in the top right hand corner of that, on, as displayed on the screen, that the router 2's WAN IP address in this case is 192.168.1.104, which is the name given to router 2 by router 1. 
Then we need to go to the Administrations tab and then the Commands tab. You'll notice here that I've covered up some information in the Startup uh, file there, and that's because that's personal information for me and any startup data that needs to be used on your VPN client will be supplied by your VPN supplier. Into the Commands text box, we need to put the following. So, first of all, we need to just remind ourselves if for a later date what we're actually doing. So, put in the pound sign or the hashtag and put in allow router 2 to for traffic to router 1 subnets is the reminder of what the next line is doing. The line itself, the piece of code written in the Linux language um, to actually do this is IP tables minus I, and that's a capital I, forward minus S, and that's a small s. 192.168.1.0 slash 24 minus little j except and what this command does effectively is says that anything that st any thing that's addressed to a machine starting as 192.168.1. something will be addressed out it will be allowed to exit router 2 via the internet port on the back of router 2 into router 1 so this basically lets us, opens a small door in your firewall to allow access into router 1. Now just remember that router 1 also has a firewall, so anything that wants to go onto the internet, router 1 will protect you on the internet. Next, we need to go to the administration tab and then the management tab, and we need to select web GUI management, and we need to set that to enabled. The reason why we do that is it is makes it easier when we've finished setting this up to establish if our connections are working between router 1 and router 2. So we set web GUI management to enabled, then we change the web GUI port to 80. The default is 8080, but in this case we'll set it to 80, and that will make life a lot easier when we're trying to check and validate if our setup is working. So we now click on save settings, uh, sorry, save, and then apply settings. We then go to the uh, administration and management tab, and then we click on reboot router. So that completes the um, tutorial of next steps for router two. We need to do a very similar exercise on router one in order to forward the data to router two when appropriate. So on router one, I have just got the standard uh, software that came with my uh, router. In this case, it's a uh, I've got a Linsys machine, an E3200, but these commands are as just the same if you're running DDWRT on router one. So you go to the setup tab and go to advanced routing. You then um, in the advanced routing uh, table, you need to fill the following information, and we'll just make that a little bit bigger so it's easy to see. So the enter router name. We put in route in the name as router two. You can choose what you wish for that name. We then say destination LAN IP as 192.168.2.0, and we also say the gateway is 192.168.1.104. And if you recall, that 192.168.1.104 is from the router two when we ha didn't have the VPN client running. So what do the subnet masks mean? So the 255.255.255.0. Well, basically it's relating to the destination LAN IP directly above it. So it's what it's saying is that anything that has a uh, an address, when some data needs to go to an address for a machine, and the machine's address starts as 192.168.2.0, or where zero is a wildcard, therefore it must be sent through the gateway. So anything that wants to go to 192.168.2.0, it must be sent through the gateway of 192.168.1.104, which was the same uh, WAN IP address as Router2 as we found on Router2 when the VPN wasn't running. Okay, so now by doing that simple act, Network1 and Network2 are now joined. So if you were hoping to go to the control panel and click on Network Sharing and then click on See Full Map, and you were hoping to be able to see all the computers and all the gateways, etc., on this screen. And unfortunately, that's not going to be possible. And I'll explain why in the very last uh, slide of this presentation. Okay, so what we need to do now is quickly check if router uh, computer one attached to router one is talking to router two. 
So the easiest way to do this is on computer one attached to router one is type into your internet browser 192.168.2.1 and if you successfully go into the web interface of router two then you know that the computer router one is talking to router two. We then need to repeat this but the opposite around on computer two. So computer two connected to router two. If we type in 192.168.1.1 on router two, if that should take us to the web interface for router one. If it does this successfully, then we know that router one and router two are connected and can talk to each other. So how do if you if you cannot see the machines attached to router two when you're on a machine attached to router one, how do you move files between the two routers? Well, simply you have to use a file transfer program, otherwise known as FTP. Now we're not going to cover FTP and FileZilla, which is a free uh, FTP program in detail here. But what we're going to do is very quickly just show you the. Uh, information you need to put in and I'll give you some tips about what you should look for if you're having difficulty transferring data. So the first thing is try and transfer data between two objects, two machines attached to router one and this will help confirm if your FileZilla uh, is working successfully and connecting successfully. You may also need to uh, change the settings of a machine that you're trying to connect to which is using connecting to via the FTP program FileZilla and you might also need to change the settings of your firewall being used on your computer. If you're really struggling, you might want to consider turning your firewall off of your computer just for 10 minutes in order to establish if it's the firewall settings that are causing your problems. When, um, when you are successfully set up your FileZilla program, you should be able to transfer data between computer one on router one and computer two attached to router two. So first of all, you need to install FileZilla Client onto your machine, and then we're going to try using Computer 2 to connect to Hard Disk 2, which both of them are connected to Router 2. So the host name of the uh, Hard Disk 2 is 192.168.2.143. We need to get the logon type, the username, and the password all correct, otherwise you won't be able to connect to Hard Disk 2. This is the, the reason why we connect everything to, hard di uh, to Router 2 in order to set this up, is because it makes life easier to make sure you get all the information correct. Once you are successfully uh, logged in, you should be able to get a directory listing successful uh, box in the top left hand corner. Once you've done that, you should be able to then try to do the, repeat this exercise with the same data on, on computer one attached to router one, and this should be able to connect to hard disk two on router two. So quickly showing you what how FileZilla works, you have the left hand side of the screen is the directory of folders on computer two, and the on the right hand side, is the directory of folders on hard disk 2. It's use, it is, using this FileZilla client, you simply drag and drop the files you wish to transfer between computer 2 or computer 1 and the hard disk 2. Okay, this is the troubleshooting section. Uh, pretty much there's only one thing you get wrong uh, setting this up, and that is the gateway address on router 1, as shown on the left hand side of the screen, doesn't match the WAN IP address of router 2 on the right hand side of the screen. So if you recall, the, you get the WAN IP address of uh, router 2 by unplugging the power on router 2, plugging it back in, and this is the WAN IP address before the VPN is running. In this case, you'll see that the gateway of router 1 doesn't match the WAN IP of router 2, and therefore this doesn't work. So you must make these two numbers the same. So that concludes our presentation. Um, if you want to know some more information, then I suggest you visit the uh, DDWRT website and look up linking subnets with static routes. If you wish to download the FileZilla program, which is free of charge, you can just go to the link as shown on the screen. And if you're wondering why you can't just drag and drop information in Windows, the statement below, um, copied from the DDWRT website, explains that. And basically, you have to have a, an addition of Windows Server installed on your machine in order to do that. Windows Server or Wins is a bit like a Windows Home or Windows Enterprise Edition. So that is why you can't just drag and drop your information. I hope this presentation was useful to you, and I hope you check out the other two videos in the series. Thank you.